What is going on everyone? This is Andrew O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. I'm also the director of research at Leduc Trading. It is January 11th, 2021. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this content and I will continue to make it for you. Today we're going to talk about the price action and the indices. We'll walk through the volatility and some of these little yellow flags we're starting to see. We'll go under the hood and check out the sectors and style factors. Some of the trades that I took today. Today was like a pretty interesting day, more of a challenging day for me. And then we'll wrap up with some options order flow. But before we jump in, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. And last but not least, do not YOLO your entire account into any one of my trades. With that being said, we can begin our quick session here. So for box scores, we have the S&P 500 down 0.67%. We had the NASDAQ QQQ, which was dragging for most of the day, down 1.45%. We had the IWM small caps pretty much unchanged, down 0.09%. And we had the Dow Jones down 0.28%. So if we take a look at the S&P 500, we were pretty much like coming in very hot last week. If you take a look, we had a big down day on Monday, and then we pretty much just ripped throughout the rest of the week. Today, we took a bit of a breather. We pulled back to the five-day exponential moving average. We auctioned up above that, but we closed nowhere near the high. Still a very red, big candle down 0.67%. Although today was a red day, we're still above the monthly value area. We're still above all those key moving averages. So the trend is still up, in my opinion, based on how I measure the trend. Let's jump into the cues. The cues were the problem child today. Take a look here. There's a lot of controversy you know, based on based around what happened last week with the you know like riots in DC, and then the you know the deplatforming that happened with Facebook, Twitter, etc. Um, so what I'm noticing is a lot of these mega cap tech companies are coming under a bit of pressure. So I think without getting too political, like I try to just trade the price and the volume, the time, and the volatility. But I do think the politics are kind of mattering a little bit for these mega cap tech companies because this administration that's coming in, you know, one of their goals is sort of leveling the playing field in terms of like income and wealth equality. And a lot of these mega cap tech names, it's sort of been this like winner take all environment where they've just continued to grow, get bigger, get more powerful and so on and so forth. So I'm noticing, you know, like for instance, the Qs today were a big lagger down 1.45%. In the grand scheme, you know, they are still in a bullish trend as well. They closed right on that five day exponential moving average. So we'll have to see what happens with the cues. Um, but for instance, I'm going to pull up our heat map here just to give you some more context. The cues is heavily concentrated in these mega cap tech names. So on a day where, you know, Apple's down big, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Tesla, you know, it's going to be very tough for the queues to do well. But if you look at uh, the other areas of the market, there were some bright spots. So we're starting to see this dichotomy of, you know, like outperformance of small caps, underperformance of mega cap tech. And that's something that I'm keeping in the back of my own mind. Let's look at the small caps, much different story. So you can see the small caps pulled back to their five day EMA pretty much rallied, you know, almost the entire day. You can see we didn't close quite on the highs, but still very close. So the IWM, you know, it's still looking pretty bullish. It's crazy as it is to say that given the recent run. And then the Dow Jones <clears throat> down 0.28%. You can see the Dow Jones was moving pretty much sideways for a good month or two and just kind of like drifting upward. We had a nice push, and again, now we're pretty much just moving sideways. This candle looks more similar to what happened in IWM, where we pulled back to that five-day EMA, <clears throat> auctioned up higher, and closed a little bit off the highs. Now let's take a look at our sectors and style factors, just to see 
you know, where the strength was, where the weakness was, etc. I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger for you. Okay, perfect. So we have the solar stocks take a little bit of a break, but they're still in the number one spot in terms of momentum. You can see this ETF, it's up 41.43% over the past month. The cannabis names are really the outperformer here. So this is a group that I've been long for quite some time, been very bullish on. And <clears throat> you can see the YOLO ETF up 5.09%. Sometimes it helps if you have more of a long-term vision for what's going to happen with an industry. And what I think is super interesting about investing is most professional investors and institutions, they are really angling their portfolios, you know, for the next like one to three months, to be honest. They really have to, you know, perform on a very short-term basis in order to keep their careers intact. So something like YOLO and the MSOS ETF, if you've been following my videos, you've been following my Twitter, this is a space that I've been bullish on for months and months and months. Just because I knew legalization of cannabis, it became more of like, when is it going to happen than if it's going to happen. So like, for instance, if, you, if we ever run into an industry like this again, where it's not an if, it's a when, um, you know, I always feel super comfortable positioning in that sector. Because, like, for instance, the cannabis space, it was like, I know the way this trend is going. It's moving towards legalization, but it might not happen for another year or two or three, maybe. So as a retail investor, you can position for something that's going to happen a year or two or three out. Whereas an institutional investor doesn't really have that luxury of being able to do that. If they don't have certainty that something's going to happen within months, they really like can't be there. So like for YOLO, like for instance, we got a headline out of Andrew Cuomo today, uh, the governor of New York saying we're going to be legalizing cannabis because they have a big, you know, uh, tax problem. And I'm a native of New York, so I'm pretty, you know, just familiar with how unbalanced that budget is and all that stuff. Um, so now he's saying, yeah, we are going to legalize. And sure enough, like now these institutions are piling in as that news hits, whereas like anybody could have seen this coming, like you know, months and months and months ago. So that's me going on a ramp, but that's like one of the advantages of being a retail investor. And it's one that if we have that advantage, you know, we should take advantage of it whenever we can. So let me just speed up here. KRE also up 1.44%. We did have some more yield curve steepening today, and that is bullish for the bank. So that makes sense. Um, energy also going up 1.57%. And then we did have some laggards. The gold miners lagged again, down 2.03%. You can see they've pretty much given away their entire monthly performance. At one point, they were you know towards the top of the list. Now they're right back towards the bottom. And it looks like mobile payments companies you know struggled as well today. For our style factors, you can see the best performing style factors were cyclicals and high beta. So uh, I'm kind of wondering like in my own head if this has something to do with the coming vaccine or if it's just rotation or what's going on there. But the worst performing style factors were momentum and international momentum. And you can see like KWeb for instance, which probably fits under the bucket of international momentum, I would think, you know, struggled today. And it's been one that's been very hot and cold. <clears throat> so you can see, you know, we had a really bullish candle right here, a breakout. Then a big, you know, bearish engulfing candle, essentially. Not not fully engulfing, but pretty much like a bearish reversal candle. Then we had another, you know, huge burst up. Now we're getting another, you know, pretty weak day. So KWeb is likely a space that I do want to position in. I'm just trying to find the proper entry point. It looks like since this breakout, retests of the five-day EMA have been pretty good entry points. So that's going to be one that I have on my radar moving forward. Some of these names that are, you know, holdings in this fund. We saw Pinduo Duo struggle today because there was a headline that came out. Essentially, a um, like an employee of Pinduo Duo's died on the job. Um, so there is there was rumor of a boycott because of their, you know, like labor practices and so on and so forth. So as sad as it is to say, pretty much every time there's a bad headline about one of these companies. It just ends up being like a buy the dip 
Um, I didn't I didn't do that today because I would want to see some follow through. And you never know. Maybe there is backlash. Maybe there is a boycott. And this thing can actually leg lower. Um, but you can see the sell off. You know, didn't exactly come on high volume. So to me, it doesn't look like institutions, you know, are just like abandoning Pinduo Duo and getting out of this name. So this is going to be one that I'm interested in looking at, you know, for the long term, just from a technical perspective. And then let's see, Billy Billy, which is also another, you know, very strong name in this group. You can see this one pulling back, didn't even get down to the five day exponential moving average. But you can see this one. Yeah, you know, it's also the volume isn't as high as the you know previous green candle, but you know it's not super light either. And then um, Baidu, which is a name I've been trading, you know, took a huge hit today actually. So you can see that we had this breakout candle yesterday, and then this red candle you know fully engulfed that, and we pulled back to the monthly value area high. And this one again not coming on as heavy volume as the prior trading day but this is you know no joke in terms of the volume so let's see we'll take a look at some of the trades i positioned in today today i actually took a stop um in my leduc uh, trading portfolio i took a stop in apple and the reason why is because apple has been to be honest even in 2020 i've just never really had success trading this stock like my history with this stock in 2020 is I've just been getting in at bad entry points. I'll sell the stock and then pretty much as soon as I sell it, it just goes back up. So, you know, it is what it is. Like I'm not like sad about that. It's just like my track record trading this specific name is not very good. So I just want to, you know, get out of it. You can see here um, Apple closed below the five day EMA, below the 20 day simple moving average. And I've been watching this trade for the past couple weeks. I entered it, you know, right around here. And it's just been sort of like dead money for my portfolio. Where, like, it'll go up for a couple days, like right here. Then it just, you know, takes a dive right down. Like, I don't know. It just seems like it's dead money. And I know, even based on what I said earlier, a lot of these mega cap tech names are coming under pressure. So unless Apple, it's like a screaming buy, like perfect setup. It's one where I'm like, why don't I just take this off and move it into something else? So I, I took that one off for about like a 35% loss. Um, and then some other trades that I did. Let's see. <clears throat> NCLH is one that I added today. NCLH. Let me just pull it up. This is really like a more more so like thematic play for me. And I bought the 2022 January calls. Uh, so these are, you know, a year out. And really my thesis is we're going to start getting more headlines about vaccine distribution um, throughout the year. And I would just think that the cruisers are probably the biggest beneficiary of the vaccine coming out. I've traded this theme a couple times. Like I was long NCLH from about like 16 bucks a share. And I rode, you know, a pretty big part of this up leg over here. But you can see that we've moved pretty much sideways for the past, you know, it looks like two months or so. Um, so I am positioning in this one. I do have those leaps. And I would just like to see as the vaccine rolls out if this can make another leg up. And at the very least, you know, hit that, you know, 29 level again. So I positioned in that one. GoodRx is another name that I've traded, you know, like in the past month or so. So I picked up some April 40 strike calls in this name. I know there's a JPM healthcare conference coming up. Um, and I just want to see, you know, if investors start focusing a little bit more on the healthcare space. Um, you know, and if this one, like I've seen the earnings estimates and revenue estimates are really strong for this name. And a lot of very smart individuals that are in the healthcare space, you know, have been touting this name. So this is one where I'm like, you know what? It's holding the point of control after this pullback. You know, I can trade this stock and really trade against that point of control. So this one is pretty interesting for me as more of like a, you know, like a longer term swing play. Like I have the April calls. So we'll see what happens with this one. And then NVIDIA, I took a position in in the morning. And NVIDIA, they announced that partnership with NEO. 
And this one I noticed the market was very weak in the morning and Nvidia, you know, was still green. So Nvidia sort of falls in the camp of those mega cap tech names, but it was showing some strength. It didn't exactly close, you know, like anywhere near the highs of the day. But we'll see. I'm sticking with these Nvidia common shares that I purchased. So I'm just gonna move my alert up. I want to be alerted if we hit, you know, if we get to the prior high. So yeah, purchase Nvidia as well. Um, but yeah, today I was just kind of like waiting and watching for the most part. I want to make sure that if the market, you know, just spills into options expiration, you know, I'm not too overexposed. Oh yeah, another one that I traded. This one I think would be a pretty interesting trade. Um, for Twitter, I actually did um, an iron butterfly. So I traded for this Friday, January 15th. I sold the 48 strike put. I also sold the 48 strike call. Um, it's almost like selling a, you know, a straddle. But then I bought, you know, the 51 strike call and I bought the 45 strike put. So essentially I'm just saying like I think Twitter might go sideways um, for the next week, you know, until Friday. So we'll see what happens with that one. But there's a pretty good risk to reward on that trade. Whereas like I took in a credit of like $2.10 and I think my risk is like 90 cents. So I was surprised that I was able to get, you know, that risk to reward, but you know, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> then I have my Fubo butterfly that has been working. So this one, you know, I talked about this one in a prior video. I believe I put my butterfly on on this candle right here. My thesis was that Fubo might drift, you know, just sideways for a while until options expiration. I have the 25, 31, 37 uh, call butterfly. So really, I'll hit a max gain on my trade. If Fubo moves more towards that 31 strike, and I just want to make sure that Fubo holds this, you know, value area low at 25.76. So we'll see, I might look to take a target in this butterfly. I've noticed the pattern almost every day is that Fubo trades above the monthly point of control. I'm sure it gets the bulls, you know, all excited. And then, it, but it just looks like there are sellers in this name that every time it gets to that point of control, you know, people are offloading their position. One thing I am noticing is that the volume is drying up here. And this is tough because, you know, a lot of people say on like volume dry ups, like, oh, you know, the volume is drying up, you know, could make a big move up. Um, but this one is drying up after a big, you know, sell off. So, like, I guess the question for me really is like, are the sellers running out of ammo or are the buyers running out of ammo here? So, you know, I'm hoping some buyers come in and auction this closer to 31 uh, into Friday. But we'll see what happens with Fubo. And then let's see. OK, we're already at. Okay, we're already at 18 minutes. Let's very quickly take a look. We'll check out some of the options activity. And I'm gonna pull this up over here. And I'm gonna filter for orders $1 million and up. Okay, perfect. And I'm filtering, you know, based on the premium. So you can see the Tesla call buyers in here. Honeywell, which is a name that I have calls in. You know, there was a call buyer that came in at 9.32 in the morning. You can see Honeywell. Honeywell pretty much hit the low end of its recent trading range today. You can see just put in a doji candle. I'm really playing for a breakout in Honeywell. So I want to see this level hold, but it was good to see, you know, a call buyer coming in uh, in the morning. Facebook has been, you know, the talk of, you know, all the politics lately. Looks like some call buyers positioning there. Um, another Amazon player. This looks like a stock replacement play because it expires January 15th. And then I do see some Apple call buyers. Apple call buyers have been coming in really for the past couple of weeks. They haven't really been right yet. I'm sure now that I closed out my position, you know, now Apple will just go to the moon and I'm okay with that. Um, so we'll see. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, like for the most part, like if Apple does go up after I closed it, you know, so be it. I could always re-enter. Square, I'm seeing a call buyer. Let's see what Square did today. Let's 
Yeah, Square closed on the lows and closed you know, right on the 20-day simple moving average. This name has been in a really nice trend. And as of late, you know, for the, pretty much the entirety of 2020, it's paid to buy the dips. So we'll see if this one is an exception. But Square will likely be on my watch list. Let me see it on PayPal if it had a similar move. Yeah, PayPal, kind of a similar move. This one looks pretty nice. It's looking coiled right there. Hmm. I like PayPal here. Let's see. Yeah, PayPal pulled into the monthly value right high and closed above the five day EMA. This one looks pretty good. And then I see, I believe I saw an EEM order. Oh no, that was IWM. Intel GDX, so we're buying the dip there. And then NEO, but NEO actually announced, you know, like a, a convertible bond offering, like right after hours. Um, so I actually, you know, I put some NEO on in my portfolio. As soon as I saw that headline, I sold my NEO off right away. Whenever there's dilution like that, especially if a stock is this extended, I always just try to step out of the way. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that one. Um, that about does it for today's market recap video. I don't want to hold you guys for too long. Hope you all had a great trading day today, and I will see you all tomorrow.